Hey guys, by now you should have been looking at some material on the civil rights movement. Uh, please watch this video and pay attention for some clues to help you complete a short quiz afterwards. Since the Civil War, African Americans had been fighting for freedoms that they were denied, such as political rights, job opportunities, and an end to segregation. The Civil Rights Movement was an organized effort by black Americans to end racial discrimination and gain equal rights under the law. It began in the late 1940s and ended in the late 1960s. Although there was tremendous resistance and violence resulting from efforts to slow the progress of equality, the movement itself was mostly nonviolent and resulted in laws to protect every American's constitutional rights, regardless of color, race, sex, or national origin. You may, be, you may remember Brown versus Board of Education, a Supreme Court case that we discussed in class. This case from May 17th in 1954 uh, was decided by the Supreme Court. It officially ended racial discrimination or racial segregation in public schools, but many schools continued to remain segregated regardless. In September of 1957, when nine black students known as the Little Rock Nine were blocked from integrating into Little Rock Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, President Dwight D. Eisenhower eventually sent federal troops to escort the Little Rock Nine into school. On November 14, 1960, six-year-old Ruby Bridges was escorted by four armed federal marshals as she became the first student to integrate William France Elementary School in New Orleans. On June 11, 1963, Governor George C. Wallace stood in the doorway at the University of Alabama to block two black students from registering. The standoff continued until President John F. Kennedy sent the National Guard to the university. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, violent and disturbing instances of racial discrimination continued, yet they were almost always met with nonviolent resistance. On August 28, 1955, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old from Chicago, was brutally murdered in Mississippi for allegedly flirting with a white woman. His murderers were found not guilty, and the case brought international attention to the Civil Rights Movement after Jet Magazine published a photo of Till's beaten body at his open casket funeral. On December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white man on a Montgomery, Alabama bus. Her defiant stance prompted a year-long Montgomery bus boycott and cost the bus company a lot of money. Her actions inspired Norman Rockwell's painting called The Problem We All Live With in 1964, as well as the Freedom Riders of 1961. The Freedom Riders were black and white activists who took bus trips through the American South to protest segregated bus terminals and attempted to use whites-only restrooms and lunch counters. The Freedom Rides were marked by horrific violence from white, white protesters. They drew international attention to their cause. They had also been inspired by four African-American college students in Greensboro, North Carolina on February 1st, 1960, who refused to leave Woolworth's whites-only lunch counter without being served. The Greensboro Four, as they were called, as Al Blair Jr., David Richmond, Franklin McCain, and Joseph McNeil were inspired by the nonviolent protests uh, of Gandhi. The Greensboro sit-in, as it came to be called, sparked similar sit-ins throughout the city and in other states. One of the most influential people of the civil rights movement was Martin Luther King Jr., a Baptist preacher who was a powerful speaker and gifted leader. It was largely King's influence that helped keep the movement mostly nonviolent and his efforts to keep national attention on the problem that helped to bring about change in the 1960s. On August 28, 1963, approximately 250,000 people took part in the march on Washington. The march ended at the Lincoln Memorial where King gave his now famous I Have a Dream speech in the speech, he said, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, 
that all men are created equal. While King's speech had a profound impact on the nation, America was still a long way from realizing his dream. On September 15, 1963, a bomb at 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, killed four young girls and injured several others uh, prior to Sunday services. The bombing fueled angry protests. Finally, on July 2, 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 into law, preventing employment discrimination due to race, color, sex, religion, or national origin. While racial tension certainly didn't end in 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was a significant step toward a more equal society. Now take some time to complete the video quiz and the worksheet on the Civil Rights Act of 1964.